Hello everyone. This is the, uh, is the polynomial topic with regarding to the extension to mathematics. Okay, so uh, we're going to cover very first level of extension, extension to mathematics polynomial. Uh, this will include the complex numbers. I'm pretty sure you guys did, you guys did learn lots of different level of polynomials. This will, be, this will be the last topic. Okay, so let's get started by covering the remainder and the factor theorem. Okay. Okay, remainder theorem. Okay, remainder theorem should not be new for you. Okay, so th this level is the pretty much the same as previous level, but we'll try to add a little bit on top of what you learned before. Okay, that's the definition of the remainder theorem, everyone. Okay, when a polynomial Px is divided by x minus a, and the remainder is Pa. Okay, let's look at the example over here. Okay, I'm, I'm showing you with regarding to the one of the example of the long division. Okay, this long division describes is divide by divided this px by x minus two. Okay, so we call this one is divisor. Okay, so that's divisor, and that is called quotient. And then this is now remainder. This is not different from the uh, uh, long division with regard to the real numbers, but this is a little more uh, compared to the small numbers. Okay, so when you divide this by x minus two, you will get the quotient of this and remainder of this one. But if you question I ask you to find out the remainder only you do not have to perform a long division like this one so what's happening okay when it divided by x minus a say x minus 2 then remainder will be p a which is p2 in this case so let's have a look at what p2 is p2 is this one when it substitute 2 okay how do you know is it 2 or uh, not negative 2 which is x minus 2 equal to 0, which is the uh, divisor, then we'll get the value that we have to substitute into the polynomial over here, okay? So we can substitute x equals to 2 here, so 2, so 2, 2, 2. Then when you calculate this, you will reach the point to obtain the value of 27, which is the same value of this remainder. So this is way more, you know, easier way faster, lot, lot more efficient rather than performing the long division, okay? So I really suggest you to do use the remainder theorem if you ask to find out the remainder only, okay? This is very time wasting and also you may make further silly mistake, okay? So this is the definition, definition of the uh, remainder theorem. Okay. Then uh, we are going to discuss a little more about the, what the format of the remainder will be. Like here, when you divide px by ax plus b, which is a linear, there will be a quotient, but we do not know what the format of the, of the, rem, uh, the quotient is. But it is important the remainder is a constant term. What do you know? This is the linear, which is the power of 1, then remainder must be no x values at all, okay, no x term. And the next term, if you divide px by the quadratic, which is the power of 2, the remainder must be always 1 less than the divisor. See here, this is 2, we are remainder is 1, so this is 1 less than 2. Another one? If you are asked to divide px by cubic, okay, which is a power of 3, then the remainder is, l is one less power than the divisor, so which is a quadratic. So this is how, how to make the form of the remainder. Okay? So for example, if you do say px equals to ax, let's say 100 blah 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 blah, qx, what do you think about the remainder? it will be say a small a 99 it may not necessarily 99 but we should use 99 a may be negative a may not be negative but it should be uh, always starting with 99 
Okay, so big is the power of the remainder when you divide by x power to the hundred, it will be ninety-nine. Okay, so that's that's what we need to know about this one. Okay, so we just covered about the very basic of the remainder theorem. Okay, so, um, what what we did is when you ask to find out the remainder only, please do use the remainder theorem only. Please never, never perform a long division. It's time wasting, more mistake. I don't like it. Okay, you probably don't like it. And then second thing that we just covered is when you divide the polynomial by whatever your divisor, remainder or rem the power of the remainder always one less than the divisor. That's what you have to know. Okay, so that's everything. Okay, let's get moving by covering the question. Question one. Okay, question one is asking you to find the remainder. Yes, find the remainder. It, the, the question does not ask you to find anything else but the remainder. Okay, so this is a polynomial. So let's say this is a polynomial, and this will be the divisor. Divisor. Okay, you understand, guys? So divisor is a quadratic. So what, what do you think? What do you think about the format of the remainder? Is it a square? So rem the remainder, the format of the remainder should be a power of one, which called is a linear format. Okay, let's try to write what you have to do. Okay. Okay, this will be your first step after the question. So what's happening? So px is divisor. Well, we just factorize it, make it nice and easy. And the quotient, we don't know what the quotient will be. And the remainder, how do you know ax plus b? Because the divisor is quadratic, it's a power of two. Therefore, the remainder must be a power of one. Okay, so that's the critical part of the question. Then how do you know? So all we need to know is to find out A value and B value. That's what the question is asking you to do. Okay, how do you know? Okay, so we try to substitute any good values so that we can find out the A and B values over here. The first step is to substitute X equal to Y. How do you know? Okay, uh, you need to know, oh, what? How, how do I know to solve to the x equals to y not x equals to 20? Why not x equals to negative you know, 5 or 3, whatever? The idea you choose, okay, the number is this one. When x equals to 1, say, look at this one. When x equals to 1, okay, that equals to 0. So 0 times whatever this term will be completely 0. So that's why we don't have to worry about what the value of qx is, okay? When you say x equals to 1, ooh, 0, so easy. And the other part we need to understand in this case, the same manner, we can substitute negative 1 at the second step. Well, when you substitute, substitute ne negative 1, this will be 0, so everything will be 0. So that's, that's the first idea you need to start with. You understand everyone? Okay, so not hard, okay, just stay, you know, stay tuned. So we just uh, so try to substitute the x equals 1 over here. Okay, let's get to it. Okay, I substitute x equals 1 here, that becomes 1 power of 2003, big number, but 1 power of 2003 is still 1. It's just an easy number. And then I substitute 1, 1, 1, 1. Okay, so anyone can do this. Right, so 1. This is neutrally 1, so 1 minus 1 equals to 0. So for left hand side becomes 0. What about here? That equals to 0. That equals to 2. Oh, we don't need to know. That equals to something. We don't even need to know because everything becomes 0 because this is 0. You understand that? So we'll try to simplify this format, which is, okay, left hand side is completely 0, and right hand side is, a is, is becoming not now whole thing becoming 0, and that is a plus b. You understand it? Or just uh, simplified like this one. So that's the first equation you need to handle a little later on. Okay, now, now what you're going to do is we're going to substitute x is negative 1, as I spoken to you a little earlier than here. So substitute x equal to negative 1. Everyone, please do think about it at this point. You got to substitute negative 1, negative 1, oh, this is 0, so whole this chunk will be 0 simply. So that's idea, okay? 
Okay, let's do it. We substitute x is negative 1. I put negative 1 here, so it becomes negative 1 power of 2003. And then negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1. It's simple algebra. Now, negative 1 of power of 2003, no matter what the power is, all you need to worry about of the base of negative 1 is even power or an odd power. If it's even power, it will be positive. If that is odd power, it will be negative 1. So in this case, that will be negative 1. The negative 1 and negative 1. The left, left hand side should be just simply negative 2. Does it make sense, guys? Now, what about here? Okay, that's negative 2. That will be 0. That will be something. But we multiply 0 to the whole lot, it will become completely 0. Okay? And then negative 1? Yeah, negative a plus b, like this one. Okay? So left hand side is negative 2, whole becoming 0, and negative a plus b. So that's the second step. So what you can do here, we have two equations which is, you know, we, which are form, forming as a simultaneous equations. You can just solve them simultaneously, you will get a and b values separately. Let's say, okay, 0 equals to a plus b, negative 2 equals to minus a plus b. Well, it's easy simultaneous equations, or rather try to say plus, okay, in this case. If you plus, 0 plus negative 2 becomes negative 2, 0 plus negative a becomes 0, b plus b equals to just 2b. So we can simply get b is negative 1. Un understand that, guys? And then we can simply substitute b is negative 1 back to anywhere you want to, say, say here, so 0 equals to a minus 1, therefore a is 1. You understand that this? Okay, now we find b value is negative 1, a is 1. Guys, make sure these are not the final answer. The question is remainder. You should write the remainder rather than a and b values. So what's the remainder? That is the remainder. So put these two, two values back into here, there will be the answer. Like this, over here. Okay, we find over here, sub them in, that's the remainder. You understand that? Say so A is 1, B is negative 1, so X minus 1, that's the remainder. Do you understand the process? Okay, it's easy, but still, you have to make sure is to you know, you must be able to write the remainder is ax plus b because uh, the divisor is quadratic. So the remainder must be one less power than the divisor. So that's the critical part of the question. Understand that? Okay, so let's do uh, question two now. Question two will cover a little more than what we covered by the question one over here, okay? Question two. Ooh, it's a long question. Oh, looks long, but still simple. Find the remainder if this polynomial is divided by this quadratic. Oops, quadratic. Quadratic. So what do you think about the remainder? Remainder must be a linear, okay? So guys, you must be able to write the form, basic format of this, uh, you know, not the long division, but the, the, the format of the polynomial, okay, with, re with including the remainder and divisor and divided, like this, okay? So this polynomial is divided by x squared minus x minus 2, which I just factorized this straight away. There must be a, a quotient and the remainder. How do you know it is a x plus b? Because the, uh, the, co uh, the divisor is ax, whatever here, okay? Here, therefore, remainder must be a linear. That's the important part. Now, how do you do? Well, we can consider x is 2, x is minus 1, okay? Because if you substitute 2, it will be 0. If you substitute negative 1, this will be also 0. So that's how we get the idea, okay? It's not different, okay? Okay, let's start you know, by substituting x equals to 2 first. Okay, I substitute 2 here, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, 2, exactly. And so I substitute x equals 2, 2, 2, 2, anyway, like this one. This number, calculate. Yeah, grab your calculator, guys. 
what the number you will get will be this one. So that, if you calculate this, it will be 127. And then this one, 2 minus is 0. The whole chunk will become 0 simply. And then a times 2, which is 2x plus b, this is how you get it. OK, we can refine the first equation of the simultaneous equations, OK? Next step, what do you think? Have a suggestion to me. Yes, we, need to, we can substitute x equals negative 1 to make this whole thing becoming 0. You can think, oh, I can substitute x equals x equal to 0, but 0, 0, none of, none of them makes anything 0. It becomes harder. Okay, so 0 is not a good number to substitute. Okay? So it's okay, you have to substitute x equals negative 1. Okay, let's try to substitute x equals negative 1 over here, like this one. Okay? Negative 1. So negative 1 power to the 6, which is the even power, it will become positive 1. Negative 1 to the power to the 5, which is the odd power, becoming negative 1, and so on. Okay? And this one, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, negative 1, like this one. Here, cancel, 1 minus 1 is 0, 0, 0, oh, it has 1. So left hand side is becoming just 1, OK? Now over here, well, that is negative 3, we don't need to know, because this is 0, completely 0. So negative 3 times 0 times something else will be 0. So, and then this is minus a plus b. So you guys should be able to write like this one. Does it make sense? OK? So, we have two equations which, which are forming the simultaneous equation. As we did before, we do the same thing. Okay? So 127 equals to 2a plus b, 1 equals to minus a plus b. What do you want to do? You can do anything you want to. Okay? Let's say plus, yes. Let's do, uh, let's do minus in this case, because minus b minus b will, will make b disappear. It's going. So 127 minus 1 will make 126. 2a minus minus a, which is 2a plus a, which, which becoming 3a. Make sense? OK, we divide everything by 3. What do you think? 3, which is 42. Yes, we finally find a value. OK, so a is 42. Now the next one is to find the b value, OK? Whatever. You, you can substitute no matter you want to. I'm going to substitute here. So 1 equals 2. a equals to 42. So minus 42 plus b. OK? So b equals to 1 plus 42. So b equals to 43. Does it make sense? Uh, yeah, we find almost everything we need to know. So we're going to substitute one answer simultaneously, which is, I just did it. And then we find a equals to 42, b equals to 43. Guys, don't stop, OK? You have to respond to the question. You need to know what the question is asking to the R. The question does not ask you to write what A value is, what the B value is separately. But the question is asking you what, is, what the remainder is, OK? You need to write the remainder. What is the remainder? Hey, this is the remainder. You have to solve to the A and B like this one. Didn't understand it? Not hard, not hard, OK? So always, OK, again, first step is you, need, you, must, you must be able to write the format of the remainder, OK? And then your second step is to find the good numbers to make the polynomial becoming simply. Then solve them simultaneously and find A and B. You can get it, OK? OK, let's do question three. Over here, question three. Now, this is a very popular type of question, OK? So please be noticed. You may see this question from your school exam quite frequently. OK, let's have a look. When a polynomial px is divided by x minus 2, then the remainder is 4. OK, you must, you must do something from this point. When it divides the polynomial by x minus 2 and remainder is 4, that's the typical usage of the polynomial, or, or the remainder theorem. What do you want to write? You must write like this one. When you divide by x minus 2, when it's, which means when you substitute the x equals to two, the polynomial, the remainder must be 4. You must write this. No matter whether this is being used later on, you must write. Okay, No choice. 
Next one. And then Px is divided by x minus 3. Remainder is 9. Okay, it's very, very similar. What do you want to do? Like this one. When you substitute x equal to 3 into the polynomial, okay, then the value will become 9. Okay, so these two are the first two essential parts that you have to do before do anything else from this question. So similar question like this one. Now, next thing you need to do, you need to uh, write the format, okay? Well, what was the format that we did throughout the question one and two? This is a divisor. What is the uh, power of the divisor? What is the order of the divisor? Well, when you expand it, it will come out x squared, if 5x plus 6. x squared is a quadratic. So what do you think about the remainder? Remainder must be a linear. Do you understand that? Which is the power of x must be 1. So this is your second step. When it divides by px by x, two, x minus 2 and x minus 3, and the quotient must be something, okay, we, we, we don't need to know. But we need to know what the format of the remainder is, because ax plus b, because the, rem the, the divisor is quadratic, which is the power of 2. You understand that? It's not different at all. Now, simple. We can substitute, yeah, we, then we need to utilize this one by substituting 2 and 3 to, to this format. Does it make sense? Okay, let's start doing uh, the first part, okay? Try to substitute p equals to 2 here. What does it become? It will be like this. When it substitute 2, is okay, we substitute 2, 2, 2, 2. The 2 minus 2 becoming 0. So no matter what the, the, the rest of the values are, this completely will becoming 0. Make sense? And this one, a times 2, will becoming 2a b is b, 4 is coming from here, so p2 equals to 4 here. So we can set a, you know, one of the simultaneous equations on that. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what do you want to do now? Okay. We need to utilize this one. Okay. We can substitute x equals 3 to this polynomial, okay, to this format. Okay, let's do it. Okay, I substitute, okay, I'll er erase this one, it's very messy. I substitute 3 here, so 3, 3, 3, 3. You can simply recognize P3, and 3 times 2 is 1, 3 times 3 is 0, so everything becoming 0, that's why it is becoming 0. And A times 3 becoming 3A plus B. Yes, P3 is 9, so this is becoming 9 over here. Does that make sense? Okay, finally, we have two simultaneous equations. Yes, this is third simultaneous equations. I don't really wor worry about you know, if anyone can you know, have, you know, have any troubles. Okay? This is easy. What do you want to do? So 2a plus b equals to 4, 3a plus b equals to 9. What's your suggestion in starting this, you know, solving the simultaneous equation? I suggest you to take them away because b minus b will make b disappear. Easy. That's 2a minus 3a, 2a minus 3a is minus a, okay? And then 4 minus 9 is what? 4 minus 9 is negative 5. So, oh yeah, we find a, okay? We find a value first. Okay, we find a, and then we need to know b. You can substitute a equals 5 either way, okay? So I, I, I like to substitute 2a plus b equals to 4. So 2 times 5 plus b equals to 4, that's 10, plus b equals to 4. So b equals to 4 minus 10, which is negative 6. Again, guys, these are the, not your final answers. Make sure you need to respond to the question. Oh, question was asking for, oh, what the remainder is. Okay, so solve, solve the, uh, simultaneously, you'll get a and b. Your final answer will be like, this one. Does it make sense? You need to solve the a equal to 5 here, b is negative 6 into here, this must be your final answer. So not different, okay, not different at all. So subtle different from this question from other question is to, uh, to utilize the remainder theorem by the use of the previous 
the condition of the question. Okay? It's slightly different, but still not different from uh, the basic understanding of this, uh, the remainder theorem. Okay? okay, so that was, guys, question three. Let's, let's, let's jump on question four. Question four, okay, is a bit opposite, okay, so opposite compared to what we did in question three. Okay, look at here. When, when a polynomial Px is divided by x minus a, remainder is two. Ah, oh, what do you want to write? What do you want to write? We, 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 you guys now should be able to write something with regarding to the polynomial theorem. When it subject is a, then the result will be two. Okay like this one. Okay, this is a divisor, okay, so she's A here, and this will be the remainder, which, which is the result of the PA. Okay, same thing. Now, next one, if PX is divided by X minus B, remainder equal to 6. Similar. You must be able to write like this. Understand that? Okay, then, you can here, we have some, something like this. Right? That's a divisor, that's remainder. Okay, what do you want to write? It's quite easy now. So polynomial Px is this times the quotient we do not know at the moment plus the remainder. Okay, remainder is given from the question, so you just write it. All you need to do is, is to find out A and B values. It's, it's, it, it, this question does not ask you to find the remainder because remainder is given, but you are responsible to find out the A and B values over here. Okay, simply, what are the factors? Okay, not actually factors, what are the divisors are. Okay? What, what the divisors are. What do you want to do? Okay, we, we, as we did in question 3, we're going to use PA equals to 2. Okay, guys, try to solve the A into everywhere in here. Okay? Let's write. I substitute x equals to A, x equals to A, x equals to A, x equals to A, and x equals to A. So PA equals to 2. So PA is 2 now. Does it make sense? Well, A minus A, 0. Whole becoming 0. So this is the only thing you need to le left over, OK? So minus 2A plus 4 equals to 2. Minus 2A equals to negative 2. So what do you think about A? Is 1. OK? So oh, we find first value. Now. We can use the second condition of the question. Substitute B. Okay, we can sub sub B is here. So B B B B B like this one. So P B equals to six. Again, B minus B equals to zero. So whole disappeared. Okay. Now over here, minus two B plus four equals to six minus b equals to 2, or 2b equals to 2, so b equals to negative 1, okay, which makes b is negative 1. So that's at the end of the question. Okay, so that's the uh, uh, basic understanding of the uh, remainder theorem. Okay, in recapping the topic, okay, when you have the remainder theorem, the two important things. The first thing is, uh, when it divides the, the polynomial by, say, x minus a, the remainder equals to PA. This is the first thing. And the second thing you have to remember is when you divide PX by, say, say X part of the N whatever, N quotient, okay, the remainder must be AX. The remainder must be always one less than the divisor, say N minus 1, say BX, N minus 2, and so on. Okay. So we did cover these, these, these two important parts of the polynomial theorem. And then I'm pretty sure you guys understood everything properly. Okay? So make sure this uh, remainder theorem is very important to know throughout the, all of the polynomial theorem as well as the factor theorem. Okay? So we'll cover about the factor theorem by the use of the polynomial theorem after this lesson. Okay? Guys, see you then. Mm -hmm.